Family is not an important thing, it's everything. A quote by Michael J. Fox. Whether you like it or not, family is and will always be family. It's not something that you can change. TV often depicts families as loving, caring, nurturing. But when the camera cuts, it's back to reality. And we all know that a lot of families lack those values. A dysfunctional family can be spotted from a mile away. It's not hard to see when things aren't what they're portrayed to be. But what about a family that seems perfect and then out of nowhere, things begin to surface and what you thought was near perfect was far from it. This story begins with a woman who everyone around her knew as simply Marsha. Marsha is described as a bubbly personality, someone who was also affectionate. From early on in life at a very young age, Marsha was always someone who was driven, ready to take on the world. Upon graduating, Marsha knew exactly the field she wanted to enter. She would enter the medical field. This career choice will lead her to Louisiana State University School of Medicine, located in New Orleans. While in New Orleans, she would meet a man, a man who goes by the name of Christopher Edwards, a man who is described as a gentleman, very strong-minded. He was also extremely driven and ready to reach his goals. He would attend Morehouse College, but then he would accept an internship in New Orleans, Louisiana. With Christopher Edwards also being in the medical field, he was bound to run into Marsha one way or another, and as fate would have it, they would cross paths. After meeting each other, they would realize that they had a lot in common, a lot of the same goals as well, and they would quickly begin to fall for each other. And after some time passes, they decide to make it official, and Marsha would officially take Christopher's last name. Upon leaving school in Louisiana, both Marsha and Christopher would decide to relocate to Atlanta, Georgia. It would be here that they would begin their family. June 30th, 1995, the world would make way for Christopher Edwards. Christopher would enter this world and take the name of his father. He would be a junior, but the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. He was also, at a young age, very driven and eager to learn. He was described as very skilled. He was polite, and like his father, he was also a gentleman. Four years after the birth of Christopher Edwards Jr., they would welcome a daughter into this world. June 21st, 1999, the world would make way for Aaron Edwards. She's described as a person who was lighthearted, kind, giving, and just like her parents and her brother, she was also a driven soul. With Aaron Edwards entering this world, their little family would be complete. But after the birth of Aaron, things began to decline in the relationship of Marsha and Christopher. And after trying to fix things and being unsuccessful, they would decide to separate. But although they did divorce, they did maintain a healthy relationship for their children's sake. One by one, Christopher and Aaron Edwards would graduate from high school and begin their journey as adults. Upon graduation, Christopher Edwards would attend Elon University and his little sister Aaron would relocate to Boston University. Chris focused most of his time on sports. He was a self-proclaimed sports nerd who after graduation would land a job at ESPN. Erin Edwards was also taking the journalism route. She even landed an internship at NBC. By the year of 2019, Marsha Edwards would be 58 years old. Christopher would be 24 and Erin Edwards would be 20. At this point in their life, their father would be a prominent surgeon in the area of Atlanta, and their mother would be a successful business owner. 
But to add to their parents' success, they had raised two smart children who were headed for the stars. Looking from the outside in, it seemed as if this family had it all. But something was soon to happen that would put that into question. August 21st, 2019. Christopher Edwards Sr. would be trying to contact his son, but after multiple attempts to reach him and not being successful, he begins to worry. And after too much time elapses, by 6 p.m. on that day, he would be contacting the authorities. After receiving the call, they would be dispatched to the Vining suburb, a wealthy community where Marsha Edwards and her two children lived in a four-story townhome. While attempting to do this welfare check, there is no answer, so they make entry. But upon entering the home, what they discover is heartbreaking. In his bedroom, 24-year-old Christopher Edwards would be found laying inside of his bed with multiple gunshot wounds. As the authorities begin to make their way through the home and clear other areas, Inside of another room, they would discover the body of 58-year-old Marsha Edwards and 20-year-old Aaron Edwards. Both the mother and daughter were also found with gunshot wounds, and all three victims were declared deceased upon arrival. The authorities would then have to prepare themselves to tell Christopher Edwards the bad news that his family had just been murdered. Sean and Adam, we just found out from Cobb County Police that three adults, two women and one man, that they died from apparent gunshot wounds inside this townhome. Right now, Cobb County Police are inside. You can see through some of these windows, the lights are on as they investigate and try to figure out what exactly happened. We are told that this was discovered through a welfare check at around 6 p.m. tonight. Now, at this point, we haven't been told whether or not um, the family and friends who asked police to perform that welfare check how long it had been since they last heard from these three individuals. Police also not telling us yet how these three individuals knew each other, what their exact relationship was like, only that they all lived here inside this townhouse throughout the past few hours since we have been on scene. We have seen um, about a dozen or so police officers out here going around the townhouse through this green area that sits in between this end unit and also the fence line right here with flashlights also going through there making several rounds around the townhouse and it wasn't until about 9 30 this evening that they finally actually went inside so still a lot of information that we are waiting to get from Cobb County Police since they just made it inside the unit um, a few hours ago they also have not yet revealed where exactly these three people were found inside the home but again only that it was two women and one man who did die from these apparent gunshot wounds. We're going to continue to follow this story and bring you more updates as they become available. After processing the crime scene, the next step is to find out exactly what happened. The bodies would be shipped off to the coroner's office for further processing, and they were awaiting autopsy results. But in the meantime, they begin to question friends and other family members trying to get a clue as to what could have happened. Who would want to harm a family who's done nothing but try to help their community? The daughter, Erin Edwards, who was 20 years old, often spent her time fighting for human rights, was now the subject of a murder investigation. And upon speaking to family and friends, they didn't offer any details. No one could figure out anyone who had a bad bone in their body towards that family. They were held in high regards in the community and got along with just about everyone. So the thought of someone wanting to harm them seemed far-fetched to the people who actually knew them. While conducting their investigation, the authorities would run across the Instagram page of Marsha Edwards who on the day of the incident just so happened to make a post. It was a picture of Marsha, and the caption read, I've had the best summer, first with Chris in Miami and Aaron in Italy. I could not ask for better children. A post 
that at the moment seemed very sad. A mother reflecting upon her time with her children. But the feeling of that post was soon to change because when the autopsy results are released, people begin to question why she made this post. An autopsy would reveal that Christopher Edwards Jr. was shot while laying in his bed five times. 20-year-old Aaron Edwards would be shot twice in the left arm and once in the chest. That wound would in fact be the fatal wound that claimed her life. When the autopsy of 58-year-old Marsha Edwards was concluded, she would be shot once in the chest, but the medical examiner would determine that this wound was self-inflicted. With this newfound information, the homicide detective would close the case because at that time, they thought it was clear-cut. Marsha Edwards had harmed her children and then turned the weapon on herself. But now the authorities were faced with the question, why? Why did she do it? But no one could answer the question. 58-year-old Marsha Edwards never had a history of mental illness and family and friends around her by all means thought she was happy but things aren't always what they seem are they christopher edwards would be forced to bury his family without any real answers as to why it happened Many family and friends still in disbelief as they gathered today to remember a prominent Atlanta area family after the tragic deaths last week. A joint memorial service was held for Dr. Marcia Edwards and her adult children, Christopher and Aaron Edwards. Cobb County police say that Marcia Edwards shot Aaron and Christopher inside their Vinningstown home last week, then killed herself. Well, they called it a celebration of life, not a funeral, and it was obvious today how many lives the Edwards family impacted as dozens gathered at Cascade United Methodist Church in Southwest Atlanta for their memorial service. And there were no caskets, just three large framed photos of Marsha, Christopher, and Aaron centered at the altar. Aaron and Christopher's father, Dr. Christopher Edwards, stood and greeted almost everyone who walked in with the procession. Several of the organizations the family was part of were there too. Marsha Edwards was a member of the Camilla Rose chapter of the Lynx. They were all seated together in white. And the Woodward Academy Chorus from Christopher and Aaron's former school sang at the service. Family members spoke and remembered their lives with emotional and even at times funny anecdotes. Mayor Atlanta, uh, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, a close friend of the family, was the last to speak. She remembered the tenacity and character of Christopher and spoke about the time he interned at the city council office. She said Aaron's laughter brightened every room and that she could have taken over the mayor's communications office. Mayor Bottoms announced a portion of the mayor's scholarship fund will now be named after Christopher and Aaron. And in lieu of flowers, people have been asked to donate to the multiple memorial and scholarship funds set up in their honor. To this day, the reason why Marsha did what she did is still unknown. I think it's very important to highlight that although she didn't have a history of mental illness and didn't show any signs to the people around her, that doesn't mean that it didn't exist. Some people are very good at keeping the hurt inside and never showing anyone any type of sign that they're struggling. They brunch here at St. Bell's. Um, this is a favorite place of ours. We come every week. Um, we come here every day. We come here every single day. Uh, yeah. But thank you for coming. It's been a pleasure hosting you. Thanks, Mom. Appreciate you. Take it. Oh, all right. <laughs> Do you have anything to say? It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Always a pleasure to spend time with my daughter. Happy birthday. Now, when it comes to what transpired in that home, a lot of people believe that Marsha did it. But then there are a few that believe maybe the whole story hasn't been told. In fact, there are theories running around that this was a hit. And, you know, there's nothing to corroborate that. The police did release a statement and say that they analyzed that scene very thoroughly and they found no evidence that a third party was involved. When it comes to the other theories, 
I'm not going to get into that. Personally, me, I feel like it's a little bit disrespectful, you know, given the moment, because outside of what they released, I see nothing to implicate anyone else either. This story is truly all around tragic and sad. And my heart goes out to Christopher Edwards. For him to have to lose his family in the fashion that it happened is, is truly breathtaking. I know that by the end of this video and learning what you learned, a lot of people might have some hard feelings towards Marsha, and rightfully so. But you must also understand that you just never know what a person is struggling with. When it all boils down, the truth of the matter is that on that day, three people lost their lives. Marsha Edwards, Christopher Edwards, and Aaron Edwards. My heart truly hurts for Christopher and Aaron because they were taken at such a young age. 24 years old and 20. Very smart individuals who are about to conquer the world. If you are a person who is struggling with mental health or you have ill thoughts, please don't be afraid to reach out to someone else. I will be linking a number inside of the description, a hotline that's open 24 hours. And anytime that you're feeling down or feel the need to talk to someone else, they'll be there for you. Remember that you are not in this fight alone. I hope that if you're watching this video, you will take this as a learning experience. And if you suffer with depression or mental health, always remember that you do matter. My heart truly goes out to Marsha Edwards as well. I'm sorry that she lost her fight with whatever she was struggling with. I truly hope that she finds peace inside of her sleep. Rest in peace, Christopher and Aaron Edwards. Thank you for being a light for others.